Hello, my name is Paul Miners. Welcome back to another one of my Asana training videos. In this video, I want to give you an introduction to how to set up and use rules in Asana. Now, rules are a really powerful way of defining a workflow or a process that governs how tasks are updated and managed within a particular project. This is great for projects like bug tracking, support tickets, design requests, any project where you want to make automatic updates or changes to a task as that task is worked on and moved through that process. If you have any questions at the end of this video, feel free to leave me a comment below. And if you would like some one-on-one -on -one help with setting up or just getting more out of Asana, maybe improving the adoption of Asana within your team, then click the link in the description below to learn more about my Asana support options. Okay, let's pretend I am running a marketing agency and I have a project like this called Support Tickets and this is where I'm going to get clients of mine to submit help requests if they have issues with their website or social media campaigns and ads and things like that. I'm now going to create some rules to help me manage these support tickets. Now rules are set up at the project level. So inside this project, if I go to the customize menu here, there's an area for rules and the rules that I create are only going to run on tasks in this particular project. If I go to a different project like design requests here, and if I go to the customize menu, the rules in this project are completely different and only run in this particular project. So that's the first thing to just kind of understand with rules is make sure you are setting them up in the correct project. They will only run on tasks in that project. If you want rules to run on multiple projects, one option is to create the rules within a, a project template. So if I go to my Asana demo team, I have this, um, uh, let's go to my new client template down here. And if I edit this, I can also add rules within a project template like this. Here they are. And now anytime I use this template to create a new project, these rules will apply and work and, and exist in that new uh, project going forwards. So let's go back to my support tickets project. Now you can see I've set up some basic sections here. I've got um, a column for new tickets, assigned and in progress, waiting on customer, and complete. And so I'm just going to move the task through these, through these sections. Here's an example task. So I've got the client or company name and sort of a description of the issue. So the website is down. And I've also set up a custom field for the support type to see if it's a website issue, social media issue, or paid ads issue. Now, I'm gonna create some rules. So let's go to our customize menu and I'm gonna click the rules button here. Now rules, uh, firstly, you will require at least the premium subscription of Asana to use rules. Premium is gonna give you the ability to create rules using these various templates that you can see on this screen. If you want to create custom rules and build your own rules from scratch, which is, in my opinion, kind of one of the most useful parts of this feature, you will need the Asana business subscription. So because I'm on business, I'm going to create a custom rule here. Now we start our rule with a trigger. So triggers we can see on the right hand side. These are the things that happen that will start our rule and uh, before our rule then performs a number of actions. So I'm going to create a trigger where when my support type custom field is changed. So if that change, uh, if that field changes, I want to assign the task, move it, and create some subtasks. But I want to assign it to a particular person based on the type of request. So in this next section here, check if, I'm gonna say, check if the support type is a website issue. If it's a website issue, we can do or perform certain actions. So the first thing I'm gonna do, here are all my actions that I can perform. I am going to change the assignee. So let's say, if it's a website issue, we're gonna assign that to Warwick on my team. That's the first thing we want to do. I also want to create a subtask for Warwick. So I'm gonna click the plus button here and we're gonna add in another action. So I'm going to create a subtask and I'm gonna just say, just for the purpose of this example, investigate website issue. That's gonna be assigned to Warwick as well. And that's gonna be due on the same day. So I'm just gonna say task is due in zero days. So the same day. So I've assigned the task to Warwick. I've created a subtask for Warwick. And the other thing I'm going to do is one more thing. I'm going to move the task to the assigned and in progress 
section. So that's my basic rule where if it's a support issue, it's gonna be assigned, the task will be moved to a section and I will assign a subtask. Now, if it's a different type of issue, I want to perform a different set of actions. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click the plus button and I'm gonna add this otherwise if branch. So I can say, okay, check if it's a support ticket, do these actions, otherwise, if it, the support type is, let's say, a social media issue, then perform these actions. So I'm gonna pause here, I'm gonna set this up now. Here we go, so I've said, if it's a social media issue, set the assignee to Jarvis this time, again, move it to the in progress section and create a subtask to check the social media post. And I'm just gonna skip ahead, I'm gonna do this one more time. So I'm gonna add one more branch uh, and say, otherwise, if it's a, Let's do the final one, paid ads issue. I'm gonna set up my additional actions. So here we go. I've got my three different branches or paths of logic now. So based on that support issue type, that custom field, Asana is gonna perform a different set of actions. It's gonna change the assignee. It's gonna assign the appropriate subtask and it's gonna move the parent task to the appropriate section. So my rule is basically ready to go. I'm just gonna show you a couple of other things we can do with rules. Firstly, going back to my trigger, I can also add multiple conditions for my, or multiple triggers. So if I add this when condition here, I can trigger this rule either when the support type is changed, or I could just say, um, you know, when a task is moved to a section. So I can say if, if either of those things happen, either of those events or triggers would start this, this rule or this automation. So that's quite useful being able to have multiple triggers trigger the same automation, but we're not gonna do that for this rule. You can also um, add multiple checks as well. So just like I've got this check here, if the support type is set to a website issue, I can add multiple checks. So I could say if it's a website issue and the assignee is, you know, pool. So I can have multiple checks or multiple conditions that need to be satisfied before I perform my actions. And these can either be and conditions, so both of these conditions need to be met, or I could specify this as an or condition, meaning either of these conditions would need to be met. Again, I'm just gonna keep this simple, so I'm just gonna leave the rule as is. You can give your rule a name. The final thing I'm gonna do is then publish, and in my case, I'm just gonna save this rule because I already have it in progress. So there we go, there's my rule, it's active in the project now. Let's give it a test and see if it works. So I'm gonna to go to my test task and I'm gonna change the support type. So let's set it to be a website issue. And if we give Asana a second, it's gonna perform the rule. You can see down the bottom left there. As you can see, the rule um, moved the task to the assigned and in progress section. It's assigned it to Warwick in this case because it's a website issue and it's assigned a subtask. Great, so everything happened as expected there. If I change this to a social media issue, this should now get reassigned. So now we go, it's, it's gonna be reassigned to Jarvis and it's created the uh, subtask for Jarvis in this case. Now I've set up a couple more rules to further streamline how tasks are managed in this project. So the first one I've done is when the task is moved to a section and the section is waiting on customer, I've created a subtask to follow up with the customer and check if the issue has been resolved. I've set this to be due in five days. And for the assignee, I'm using a variable. So because the task might be assigned to one of those three different people, and I don't really want to have to create this rule three different times, this is where I can use a variable. So let's strip out that and, and set this up again. So if I come here, assign task to a variable assignee, I can use the assignee or the user assigned to the trigger task. So the trigger task is the parent task. When that, uh, when that task moves to the waiting on customer section, it's gonna create this subtask, assigning the subtask to the assignee of the parent task, if you follow my logic. So that's uh, one rule that I've created. And the other rule that I've created, very simply, when the task completion status is changed, and this is for the task, or I could also check for subtasks, and the task is complete. Again, I could check if all subtasks are complete, I could, I could make a change, but I've just said if the parent task is complete, move the task to the complete section. So let me show you those two rules in progress. Here's my test task. If I move this to waiting on customer, give Asana a second, it's now gonna create a another subtask, follow up with customer, issue resolved, 
And in this case, this subtask has been assigned to Jarvis, who is the owner or assignee of the parent task. So that's great. Um, Jarvis is going to do these subtasks. And then finally, when the issue is resolved, he will mark the parent task as complete. And that's going to perform the third rule. It's going to move that task to the complete section. So that is a look at how to get started with rules in Asana. Now in my master Asana program, I show you how to take this a step further by combining the other features of the customized menu and the workflow tab here, and how we can use things like fields, forms, and task templates to further streamline and create a really slick process for managing your work in Asana. If you are interested in getting that additional support, click the link in the description below to check that out. In my opinion, one of the main benefits of the Asana business subscription is this feature to create custom rules in Asana. We've worked with clients to set up rules like if a task is ever overdue, we can post a comment on that task to alert the project manager, or we can integrate third-party software. So if you complete or update a task, you could share an update in Microsoft Teams or Slack. So we really have just scratched the surface in this video. If you have any questions, leave me a comment below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.